Hey everyone, it's Joe from Gadgetry Tech, and today I'm going to review the Turtle Beach Stealth Pro. This is a $330 wireless headset, so it is expensive. Uh, this is a very in-depth review, but I want to start with some basics. Now, $330. I have the Xbox edition, which has the fancy green packaging. The Xbox edition does work wirelessly on PlayStation, Nintendo Switch, PC, etc. The only reason why you would want the PlayStation version is if you want the blue light on here when it's on instead of green or different packaging, but other than that, function-wise, it's essentially the exact same thing. Now, this headset was sent to me for review by Turtle Beach, so huge thanks to them. It won't affect what I say about the review. If you've seen the channel before, you know that has never swayed our or my opinion, I guess, before, um, but I did want to thank them for sending it. They actually sent this to me weeks ago, um, so that was a huge win because I got to use it for a long period of time instead of, like, all at the last minute. So uh, that was helpful. Now I will have generic Amazon affiliate links in the description below that will help you find and purchase it. Nothing to do with Turtle Beach, it's just a generic kickback because I do purchase a lot of products that aren't sent to me for review. So uh, don't hesitate to check those out. If you like the content, please like and subscribe. I have a lot of stuff coming soon with gaming and audiophile stuff. The channel is going to grow. Thank you for finding the channel. And to help save you time, uh, I will have chapters in the description below as well. This is going to be a long review. There's a ton of stuff this thing does. So if you only care about certain parts, feel free to use the chapters. Otherwise, I'm going to do my best to present what's important as quickly as possible. So what's in the box? Well, obviously you get the headset. Now the microphone wasn't attached out of the box. And look at that. It's a detachable microphone. It also comes with this little plastic uh, cap so that's pre-installed. So if you don't plan on using the internal microphone, you can always leave that cover on and peel that plastic off. You also get two cores. There's a longer cord because you can charge this headset if you don't want to use the swappable battery pack. So they give you a longer one there. A short USB cable, which is USB A to C. This is what you use to connect to your console or computer. And then this little transmitter station, which check it out, a battery. This comes with two batteries. Now I'll get into all the specs and all that after, but one of them is installed in the headset. And uh, so it's cool that you have a swap. And then up down the road, I guess if the batteries wear out, you can always buy more. Comes with some literature. Comes with actually a really nice uh, travel case that even has a secondary pocket inside. So you can keep the transmitter separate from the headset. I like that because it keeps them from rubbing into each other and scratching each other up. So that's just a little cool thing. Now, as I mentioned, the transmitter lights up in green on the Xbox model. Uh, when the microphone is active, when you mute the microphone, the ring on the outside lights up in red, showing you that you're muted. The PlayStation version switches to blue. Overall, the transmitter uh, wireless range was excellent. It's a very low latency headset, and as far as the toilet test goes, which I am dubbing my official range test, you can go several rooms away and there's no wireless cutout. The range on this is farther than the SteelSeries Nova Pro, not as far as the Odyssey Maxwell. It's close. It's literally, you're talking like 10 feet between each, um, but the JBL 910 and the Odyssey Maxwell, just a little bit further. This is still extremely far and the latency is great, so I just want to call that out. Now, as far as build quality, comfort, and design goes, this is a gaming headset, but they actually did a really good job of showing some restraint. It's monochromatic. There's no glossy plastic. There's no RGB. Nothing flashy. There's not even bright splashes of color. Regardless if you get the PlayStation or Xbox version, it is all monochromatic. Now, they do still use premium materials. You can see that the headband has this really nice uh, metal construction. Inside, the yoke is extremely well made. There is no flex here, and you have a double pivot point. So as far as durability goes, this should hold up for a long period of time. Speaking of the headband, I don't know if you noticed this, but I want to say this now so I don't forget. It's very easy to adjust. It's kind of like buttery smooth, and you can see these nice little lines so you can clearly see where you're going. The headband design is when it's open, it actually almost locks in place. Like I'm pulling really hard, and it's pretty much not moving. They design it so when you're wearing it, the headset isn't adjusting itself and loosening up over time. A lot of other headsets that use that clicky feeling uh, tend to do that after a while. So it's little subtle things like that that show the quality of this headset. You have an all plastic top here with the Turtle Beach logo, of course. That's pretty normal for Turtle Beach. A leatherette pad that the padding goes edge to edge. It wraps all the way around. I don't feel anything inside. There's no wire that I can feel inside running across, so it should hold up well there. You have really nice memory foam leather pads. They're a little bit more springy than the JBL Quantum series, but it's very comparable. And I'm saying that one because I recently reviewed it. Uh, it's comparable to some others, but this is a really nice leatherette pad. On that note of the pad, 
Let's do a pad compression test. I like doing these, uh, especially with active noise cancellation. So you can see it has very good, very good seal. Um, that's super important. And that actually affects a couple things on this. But the pad compression is very, very symmetric. I have a little bit of bubbling on the inside and out. So you can kind of see how that changes the diameter of the pad. And look at that segue right into measurements of the pad. So let's go with the height first. Let's go to millimeters and centimeters here. So you have a 60 millimeter high pad and the width is about 42 millimeters. And as far as the depth goes, there's a little lip on my ruler here. So I'm gonna take a couple of millimeters off. It's right about 18 millimeters of depth. So the depth is great. Now this has a better depth than the Steel Series Nova Pro. It also has a much more shallow microphone bump. It's almost flat um, because this has active noise cancellation. So that's really smooth. And the driver baffle is padded on top of it. So there's a lot of things to help with comfort there. As far as weight goes, if I put the microphone back in, this is a fairly chunky headset. It's almost identical to the 910X from JBL. It's 418 grams, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, now it's showing, let's see, I'm getting 412 grams right now on my scale. So let's just reset it to make sure that I'm not way off here. Put it back on 416. So I'm within a couple grams of that. It's heavy. It's heavier than the Stealth 700 uh, G2 uh, or Generation 2 Max. So it's up there. It's not as heavy as the Maxwell, but it still wears well. And that's partly thanks to the surprisingly lighter clamp force considering the Stell 700 Gen 2 had a stronger clamp force and no active noise cancellation, I was nervous this was gonna get worse because you really need a strong seal for ANC or active noise cancellation. It is on the medium to slightly stronger side. A couple of, like the uh, Steel Series Nova Pro and then JBL 910X have a little bit lighter clamp, but this isn't like crazy strong. I can still wear this for a long period of time and it makes an excellent seal. Now, <clears throat> Turtle Beach, talks about Prospect glasses support. So whether you have thick frame glasses or thin frame, um, I use Gunnar sometimes for blue light blocking, they will contour and conform around your glasses and it maintains an excellent seal. I still got great active noise cancellation support, uh, performance even when I was wearing glasses. So if you're concerned about glasses comfort, that's not an issue, doesn't affect sound and the comfort's actually really good too. The last thing I always like to show is this is full swivel. You get tilt, a little bit forward swivel and all the way back. And the way Turtle Beach has designed their headphone is when you do have it swiveled out to lay flat in your shoulders, it's not overly strong. It's not pinching your neck. They've always been good on that. The Stealth 700s were the same way. So uh, this comfort is great too. Now, as far as layout and controls go, you have this detachable microphone spot here. It comes with this little cap. You can pop that off and you can see the little uh, notch there. So you line the microphone up. Because this is a flip to mute mic, you can basically do that. and Right there is where the microphone's muted. There's a little bit of a click. And that's how you can mute or you can put it up all the way all together. Then if you remove, you don't have to remove the mic by the way. So let me just show you to prove a point. So even with the microphone on, you can remove this left co cover because there is a battery. And I do like the magnet system. There's also a little notch to put your finger. So it's very easy to get access to. Battery is a little smaller. You only get 12 hours of battery life, which is kind of a bummer, but that's how they rate it, so I just wanted to show you that. It's very easy to swap, and you're good to go. Now, when you go on the left side, USB-C charge port, which is on the front. It's kind of in an odd spot, but it's not really designed to be charged while you're using it. You can charge while you're using it. On that note, a 15-minute charge gives you three hours of battery life. This textured button here, that is the superhuman hearing mode. More on how that affects the sound after, but that's what that button does, and you cannot reassign it as of the time of this review. It could change later. Power button, it is only a power button. Press and hold to turn it on and press and hold to turn it off. The Bluetooth button, this is how you enable pairing mode. This is also an action button for your Bluetooth device because you can press to answer a call, hold it down for your voice assistant, double press for changing tracks, etc. Then these little holes right here that you can see, that's the internal microphone system which you can use for chat and that also assists with the active noise cancellation. On the right cup, this entire wheel is your volume wheel. This is an action button. On PC mode, this action button by default turns your active noise cancellation on and off, and it's reassignable separately from Xbox mode. I'm gonna show you the software soon. Now you might have think I forgot something. Where's the game to chat mix on a $330 Xbox gaming headset? Well, 
this is the one thing that frustrated me because one of my favorite things about the Stell 700 is the controls. And what I liked about the JBL 910X was the controls. The SteelSeries Nova 7 controls. I need speed. There's a lot of times where I'm in a, a moment like you get in a car and it's loud and you can't hear your friends talking so you turn up the chat. And then you're in an area where you're trying to hear an enemy and your friends are shouting so you turn your friends down. There's no dedicated game to chat mix. To enable game to chat mix adjustment on this, you have to press and hold the action button for three seconds. Then the secondary function of this wheel turns into game to chat mix so you can dial it in. There are some beeps to tell you where the 50-50 point is and you can adjust it from there. And then after a few seconds of not playing with it, it'll default back to volume mode. I am not a fan of that, just full disclosure. It could have been perfect if they had a secondary ring or some knob for a game to chat mix. Um, so it is what it is. You can reassign this button to help with that. It's not a full game to chat mix, but I wanna show you the software soon. That's the layout though. Now one other thing I notice about the button placement being at the bottom, these buttons are actually kind of stiff. They're pretty hard to push down. And when you have a really strong seal on a headset like this and somewhat thin drivers because they're focusing on sound quality and speed and performance, when you press these buttons in with a good seal, there's driver crinkle. Basically you hear like popping or crunching sounds because you're basically compressing the air inside the headset and it's compressing the driver. So you hear little pops and crinkles as that's happening. You have to be very careful not to do that too much or too aggressively because you can damage the driver. I think they could have ported uh, this ear chamber to assist with that and reduce the crinkle noise. But as soon as you port it, you change the sound quality, which uh, can positively or, in, or negatively affect it. So if you hear crinkly sounds, just take it easy on the buttons. That's one thing. I wish the buttons were a little bit easier to press. Even pressing it on the action button like hard enough will still trigger or cause that crinkle sound to happen too. So it's time to talk about specs. Now, some people who are familiar with Turtle Beach, you'll see 50 millimeter nano clear drivers and you're gonna think, well, is it the same driver that's in the Stealth 600 for as little as $100 or the Stealth 700, which is under 200, put in a $330 headset? They are 50 millimeter nano clear drivers, but as you can see in the picture, as compared to the new Stealth 700 Gen 2 Max, the driver is slightly different. There's actually a vent in the center dust cap to the voice coil. So yes, they are very similar looking wise and size wise, but they made some modification to the driver. I don't know how that alone affects the sound outside of everything else, but they are not identical to the other models. Now, as far as battery life goes, they rate it at 12 hours per battery pack. So it's good that they give you two because that's on the short side of battery life nowadays. The SteelSeries Nova Pro Wireless gets effectively double that per battery and they give you two. So I'm not sure if it's just the way it's set up uh, for performance or this battery is packing less capacity than the size suggests. Luckily they charge very quickly and 12 hours should still get you through uh, a longer gaming session. I still got close to 12 hours of battery life. I did exceed it just slightly. At least it wasn't under, because if it was 10 or something, that would have been pretty bad. Um, but 12 is a pretty safe assumption, and that is utilizing the other features like Bluetooth and ANC. So you can extend it if you have certain things turned off. The headset will last even longer. Bluetooth support is good. It's limited. Um, it's SBC codec only. It uses Bluetooth 5.1, so you don't get the ultra low latency support of AppDex or the higher resolution of AptX HD or LDAC. The Odyssey Maxwell has LDAC, but none of them really have um, AptX on the gaming side, at least from these major brands that I've covered in the past. Razer Barracuda Pro and the Astro A30 support AAC for Apple users, but for the most part, your Bluetooth performance is gonna be pretty much the same. On a positive note though, this is simultaneous Bluetooth, which is amazing and it works perfectly. So. Just to explain how it works, you can have an active connection to your computer or console, then pair Bluetooth device to your headset, let's say your mobile phone. I can play music from my phone or watch a YouTube video or whatever it may be, and use my phone to control the volume of Bluetooth going to the headset. However, what, this is a nice feature to me, it's, it's just explaining how it works. If you have your master volume set to 50% and you crank Bluetooth volume on your phone to max, the headset will play that at 50% of its volume. So you do get full volume adjustment, but only to the limit of what your master volume is set to. If your game is cranked all the way up and you crank Bluetooth all the way up, 
they'll both be extremely loud. Now the microphone is not simultaneous Bluetooth, that's just a normal thing. If your microphone is active on a Bluetooth phone call, it disables the microphone on your console or PC. It also reduces console or PC volume by about 50%. So if you're planning on using this for a mobile Discord call to your phone, expect the game audio that's not using Bluetooth to be reduced. Now luckily Discord support is coming out for PlayStation and Xbox now so a lot of people are just using it that way anyway. So this has become less of an issue in 2023. I just wanted to explain how the Bluetooth behavior worked. Now the Stealth Pro has active noise cancellation. I mentioned that before, I talked about the microphones and there's a lot of adjustment. You do have pass-through mode or ambient mode so you can hear the stuff around you through the microphones. It'll basically replay it inside. And there's no delay there so it doesn't seem too weird or jarring. You have from zero to negative 10, which is all ambient, and then your zero to plus 10 is your active noise cancellation. I found that once you pass like seven or eight, it starts introducing a very slight hiss, almost like a very faint um, plane noise because it's working so, uh, so hard to counteract any external noise. So setting the ANC to about seven was the best balance for me. It was almost zero noise floor, had no real negative impact on sound quality, but it did a great job of reducing background noise. The active noise cancellation performance on this was better than my SteelSeries Nova Pro. It was comparable to the Razer Barracuda Pro, which had to me the best active noise cancellation in this price range. So it's it's really solid there, and it does work better than the Epos H3 Pro as well. So their active noise cancellation is great, and I think part of that has to do with how good the ear cups are and how strong of a seal it makes. All right, now I'm talking on the boom microphone on the Stealth Pro. Now on the software, the Turtle Beach Audio Hub software, I have my microphone gain set to 70%. I have no noise gate turned on, and my mic uh, monitoring volume is set to 50%. Now the software allows you to actually EQ your microphone. Now I'm using the default signature sound EQ. However, I wanna show the other profiles and one of them is my favorite. So I'm gonna to switch to the Clarity profile and the Clarity is basically doing a treble lift so you can see hear that my, my voice is a little bit higher pitched and a little sharper sounding. Then you have Smooth, which is softening the treble response. So depending on your voice, I would experiment here. And then my favorite one for my voice is Full which adds some warmth to it. And I'm talking to you on full now. This is not as good as the Corsair Virtuoso XT or even the Corsair HS80 as far as total clarity goes. However, this is arguably one of the better wireless gaming headset microphones outside of Corsair and I suppose the Epos H3 Pro Hybrid. Um, the microphone performance is great and I think with the custom EQ, it's nice. This mic even has a wider frequency response than the... Uh, uh, Steel Series Nova Pro Wireless, so I like that. Now, my noise gate is off. I'm going to type on this keyboard. I want to show you a couple things. I'm hitting the keys a little bit harder. I'm going to turn the noise gate on at 50%. At 50 I heard a beep when I turned it on, so I just make sure I didn't screw anything up. So this is the noise gate on with 50%. As you can tell, my voice doesn't sound too much different, so let's talk or type and see what that sounds like. it is reducing the keyboard noise more. Now, if you speak quietly and your noise gate is too aggressive, they're barely going to hear you. It actually cuts out your voice as well. So I'm gonna prove a point. I'm gonna turn the noise gate all the way up. Now my noise gate is set to 100%. And you can see if I talk softer or uh, the trailing parts of my voice, that noise gate is very aggressive and it kind of messes up the clarity. However, it gets rid of a lot of the background noise. Basically, nothing's coming in, but I don't like the way that one sounds. I think keeping the noise gate set closer to, let's do 50%. So now my noise gate is a little bit more normal, and I think your friends will appreciate that it gets rid of some background noise. It does a pretty good job, but it gets better because this headset has internal microphones. So I want to show you what that sounds like as well. Now, the default behavior when you unplug or disconnect the microphone is use, is to mute the mic. So in the software, there is a toggle you can do at the top to disable the mute function. And now you can use the internal microphones. It does affect what you hear on the noise, uh, the side tone, so what you hear. Uh, but this is what the internal microphones sound like. I left the noise gate at 50%. Honestly, in my opinion, even if you crank the noise gate up like I'm doing now, it doesn't have anywhere close to the same background noise rejection, which is normal but I think the microphone actually still sounds pretty decent. So if you are on the go and you wanna hear what your voice sounds like, it's not bad. So now I'm talking to you via Bluetooth using the internal microphones. This is probably as bad as it gets. Uh, Bluetooth is heavily compressed. The hands-free profile 
we'll do that in as artifacts, but you can make a Bluetooth phone call with this and then hit that Bluetooth button to hang up when you're done. So let's switch to the boom mic just in case you want to hear what that sounds like. And now I'm talking to you on the boom mic via Bluetooth. Uh, again, different sound signature than the other stuff you heard, but this is what it sounds like via mobile. So now it's time to talk about sound quality, and I want to start with the measurement and objective side. This is without bias. This is literally what my instrumentation measures from a scientific point of view or whatever. So I mentioned that they use uh, slightly different drivers than the Stealth 700 and 600. I want to go start with this. This is not a spiritual successor to a Stealth 700 with better features. The sound signature is completely different than that. So if you have a 700 and you absolutely love the sound and you switch to this, it's going to be a bit jarring. I'm going to show you the measurements now. You can see that the pink line is the Stealth 700 Gen 2. You can see this massive hump in the bass region and then followed by a huge dip in the mid-range only to be followed by you know fairly bright highs. When you compare what the mids sound like, the treble will actually seem sharper because it's a bigger delta between the two. Then if you look at the teal line, this is the Stealth Pro in stock form. That is the flattest measuring Turtle Beach product I have ever seen. It's the closest thing to a neutral sound that I've seen on a gaming headset, um, not from Odyssey. Then you compare it to the Harman Curve, you can see that both of them are, they deviate a bit. Now the Stealth Pro, to a lot of people, is going to sound bass light. If you're used to the explosive bass, this isn't going to give you that out of the box. Now the Nano Clear drivers are known to have rich, powerful bass if you want them to. So thankfully we have EQ. Now I'm going to show you what my EQ tune did to the sound and how, and then explain a few things. So what I did was I fixed the bass curve to be, you know, still relatively close to flat. I reduced the hump in the mid bass and then I changed the treble tuning so it wouldn't be as sharp or jarring, especially in the AK region. I want to show you how that compares to the Harman curve. Now I'm going to remove the old stock frequency response. And look how good or how well the Stealth Pro measures. That is a great sounding product from a gaming headset in this price range. And the new Odyssey Maxwell, arguably one of the highest rated from a tonality standpoint, meaning the frequency response is very agreeable. A lot of people think it's one of the best tuned headsets, especially in music. I wanna show you what that measures like. Now I'm gonna turn off the Harman curve. Look how close the Odyssey Maxwell is to the Stealth Pro after minor EQ done to the Stealth Pro. The potential of this is absolutely massive because you now have all these other features like simultaneous Bluetooth, a pretty ridiculously powerful app that works on mobile on a good sounding headset. So I cannot stress that enough. This is a huge thing. Now I'm gonna show you my custom EQ that I applied to get to that sound signature. So what I, and normally I would go through it, but I think it's been faster just to have you pause it at this point. So if you buy the Stealth Pro, pause it here. I'll have labels on all the sliders to help you uh, know exactly what to set it to. And then once you do that, you get that curve I was talking about. Now I do wanna to touch on this. If you go to the dashboard here, you can see on the left-hand side, it says treble boost, bass boost, vocal boost. Once you do that EQ, if you get into content that you feel needs more bass, all you have to do is slide the bass boost up and it keeps the EQ that we just custom set, but now it adds some more bass to it. And if you find the bass is too much, pull it down. And the same thing goes for the others. So that's a great starting point um, and it performed pretty much in all genres. I was listening to music from uh, Tool and Slipknot all the way to EDM and jazz, and that sound signature let me play everything. The musical performance of this is incredible. It's not as good as the Odyssey Maxwell. I'm not gonna BS and say this is the best sounding wireless gaming headset on the market from a music standpoint. I think the larger planar magnetic drivers and the way Odyssey has the resolution coming through, it's incredibly clear and very resolving. So very complex uh, tracks with a lot of instruments. The Maxwell does a little bit better job there. However, there's an edge to the Stealth Pro when you factor in the sound quality you get, plus the footstep performance, 
and all these other you know bells and whistles for Bluetooth, simultaneous Bluetooth, stuff like that. As far as gaming performance goes, I think you can see where this is coming. Now, the Stealth 700 was always a solid performer in FPS. Their driver matching is excellent. And anytime I had, I have a lot of different Turtle Beach products and I always measure the left and right driver. They're incredibly close in frequency response. And that's how you get accurate footstep tracking in addition to the whole soundstage and low latency. They, Turtle Beach, said that these drivers are hand matched. I, I don't really care for the marketing stuff so much, but I can tell you the left and right drivers are matched impeccably. They're not identical, but it's extremely close and within a very tight tolerance. Just to get rid of the whole science part and keep it simple, the Stealth Pro is one of the better if not, well, I never say the best because everyone hears differently. It's easily one of the top performing wireless headsets when it comes to footstep tracking. It has low latency with a reliable connection and the way it's tuned and the way the drivers work and the sound stage, the sound stage of this is incredibly wide. It's, it has a bigger sound stage than the Odyssey Maxwell. Pair that with the incredible driver matching, better driver matching than the Odyssey Maxwell on my two sets because I measured both, these perform equally to each other, I was able to keep up with footsteps like you wouldn't believe. It was it was so easy to play FPS games with the Stealth Pro without really thinking about it too much. So I did increase the boost when I, uh, the base via that base boost slider when I was playing games like Call of Duty because I like the immersion that I get out of it. But purely for tracking, it was awesome. Now, as far as spatial sound goes, uh, you can use Dolby Atmos on Xbox. Just put it in game mode with performance mode off, don't do any EQ because it doesn't need it, you fix it in your software. And this also works with uh, Sony's Tempest 3D audio. So again, you don't have to do any EQ on the console side, but you can benefit from the virtual sound that those provide. And of course you can even use Atmos on PC and it works perfectly there. So I wanna show you the Turtle Beach Audio Hub software real quick. And I may put the mobile app uh, overlay side by side because there is a mobile app as well. Otherwise we'll split the two out. So um, I talked about EQ briefly. You can adjust these sliders even if you do your custom EQ and this will just add or detract from that. Uh, the chat boost is a function that's only to Xbox because unfortunately the Stealth Pro has no separate chat source on PC. So if you wanna route Discord to chat in your game to game on PC, there's no mix control on Windows for that. It's all combined into a single stream, which is kind of a bummer because the SteelSeries Nova Pro has it Astro has it. There are other companies that are offering this on PC, so that's kind of a, a miss to me. Um, the game to chat mix. Again, this is only an Xbox function. That's not their fault that it doesn't work on PlayStation. That's just Sony not allowing it. Here's where you can turn on active noise cancellation. And like I said, to the left is ambient, to the right is ANC, and right about there to me was the sweet spot. I'm going to turn it back off for now. Microphone. You can toggle mute through the software if you like. Then you can turn on noise gate. This is your uh, background noise filter, mic sensitivity or gain. This is a pretty good mic, so you don't have to go too high unless you're soft spoken. You can adjust your microphone side tone and active noise cancellation still works even with side tone enabled, which is not a common feature. So that's kind of cool. Superhuman hearing. So I mentioned the button dedicated to the headset. That's just toggling it on and off. Now, if you turn superhuman hearing on, you have three presets, legacy, footsteps, and gunshots. What I found is if you enable footsteps for games like Call of Duty and Apex, but then reduce the slider to let's say 20 or 30%, that doesn't apply as strong of effect of an effect of superhuman hearing, but it can help with footstep tracking even further than the already essentially ludicrous performance there. So mess around with this. Don't feel like it's an all or nothing, 100% commitment affair. A lot of people don't know that you can actually reduce it to a percentage. The Stell 700 had the same feature on their app and that worked really well on that too. Going into the equalizer, I mentioned that you can EQ the game. So that's that middle tab here, but check this out. I can EQ Bluetooth separately from the wireless source. So your audio coming in from your phone can have its own completely unique EQ profile, which is awesome. Then, and you can turn them on and off independently. The microphone, again, this is the full preset. That's what it's doing to the sound. And if you go to like Clarity, for example, you can see what it's doing there. You can customize all of these and then save it as your own. And again, enable or disable. Now on the customize tab, you can adjust the auto shutoff, which maxes out at 30 minutes, interestingly enough. Uh, this is as of software version 3.9.0. The levels, you can change the voice prompt and the tone volume coming in. 
and you can change your function mapping separately on those right two buttons on the headset independently for PC and Xbox or console mode. Now what was annoying to me, this is the hard part I don't like. I mentioned that you have to press and hold for three seconds to do game to chat mix. My solution is to use the chat boost function uh, as the middle button instead of active noise cancellation. Because on Xbox, if I just quickly boost chat, that fixes my issue sometimes of not being able to hear friends. As of the time of this review and in the firmware in its current state, the chat boost function button does not work. If I enable it via the mobile software or the PC, it does work and I can get a louder chat boost um, as a result. So I think when an update comes, that will help address my biggest concern with this and that's the rapid game to chat mix. The, the app for phone I'm showing you now is almost the exact same thing. They separated it into a few extra tabs and then when you're going into EQ mode, it tells you to switch to landscape to have a better um, adjustability so it's easier to see. But all of these functions I just showed you on the computer can be accessed and customized in the mobile app and that works on iOS and Android. What's really killer about the customization in the apps is everything I just showed you saves to the headset. So if I make all of these wonderful changes, all of my custom EQ, whether it's my phone or my computer, then I unplug everything, walk over to my Xbox and plug it in or PlayStation and plug it in and turn it on, all of that stuff is there. If I set everything on the computer, move it to my console, power it on, wirelessly connect to the headset via Bluetooth on my phone, then open the Turtle Beach Audio Hub app on my phone, all of the settings are instantly there. It synchronizes to the headset. So this is how real people use these headsets. I am not a huge fan of how SteelSeries does their sonar program because that's PC only. So all these killer features are stuck on PC. Almost none of that translates to console. So all this great stuff works on console. You don't lose any of the settings. Unlike Corsair, unlike JBL, unlike several other brands. So, and even the Epos headset. So there's a lot of huge wins here. It's not perfect because I can't do a dedicated game to chat mix. I know it sounds dumb, but that's such a big thing for me. If it had that, man, I'd be using this thing all the time. I I'd still have been using it a lot lately. And I think it'll only get better with time, especially if they fix that chat boost function. All right, so we made it to the end of the video. Congratulations. <laughs> Normally, I will cover how this compares against competitors, like a full set of features, sound quality, mic, etc. That's a very long portion because this is a very competitive segment. So I have an upcoming video soon that will do that because that needs its own uh, runtime, basically. It would be too long. I think the Stealth Pro is easily one of the best wireless headsets on the market right now. I don't think it's perfect. I wish the buttons were easier to use. I wish the battery life was a little bit longer, even though it's swappable. And that driver crinkle sound, I, I'm not a huge fan of. I mean, that just has to do with how well it's sealed. But yeah, it's, it's, it's great. There are some pros and cons of every headset. And hopefully by watching this, you kind of decided what's more important to you or not. So don't forget to like and subscribe. Hit that bell icon so you can be notified when the next one comes out. I do have a Discord channel. So if you're curious and want to talk to other people about this type of thing, I'll have that in the description. I think I covered everything. Thank you so much as always for the support. I'd love to see you at the next video. With that being said, take care.